Good morning, good morning YouTube. It is week three of my MD to Ironman program. It is about right now 6.45 in the morning getting into work. I am on the pediatric wards, which is an inpatient service. And we have to check in around 6.30 or so. This morning I woke up, I woke up a little late, woke up at 4.45, got a bike session in. I cycled for about an hour and 15 minutes and now it's time to get ready for the day. So let me show you what it's like on inpatient wards. And then also huge news, Phoebe, my beautiful wife is graduating residency today but before we get to the rest of this video i want you to know that you are greatly greatly loved and that you are wonderfully and beautifully created and that you are capable of far more than you could ever imagine all right guys we just got done with work and it was an incredible day let me give you a short recap of how it looks like in the hospital so i get there about 6 30 we get checkout from the night team they tell us anything that went on overnight any acute events any you know things that happened with the patients that we need to know any fevers any pain meds given um just anything that happened over the night on all 20 of our patients that we had after that i go to the room i divide up the list between my interns and my medical students and then we pre-round on our patients and what this means is that we look at all the lab values um, their cbc their chemistry the urine studies their microbiology or blood cultures urine cultures wound cultures any of that stuff and then go through all the orders and make sure everything's good and then all the notes our wonderful nurses write incredible notes on the patients overnight so we look at that as well during the season right now which is crazy it is june and bronchiolitis is going crazy which just means upper respiratory tract infection so we also see on about how much oxygen each of these little kiddos are on and if we're able to wean them off of oxygen after we do all of our pre-rounding then we get to go see all of our wonderful patients and spend time with them tell them kind of the plan for the day and then after that about nine o'clock we round with our attending doctor which right now i'm getting to pretend which means be the attending um, while my attending is also there but so the interns will sign out or will present their patients to me or their medical students and then we'll go over the plan and we'll make a plan for that patient then as a team we go in and talk to the families and share with them the plan and answer any questions that they might have after rounds usually by 11 o'clock then we place all of the consults so if we need to talk to dermatology infectious disease anything like that we place at that time and then at 12 o'clock we'll have lunch and usually a noon conference but right now as the year's winding down we do not do noon conference after that one to three the interns and myself will work on all the discharges the notes um, everything like that and then I try to do some teaching for the medical students and then we try to get out of there by four o'clock right now it's 4 25 so one of the very, very common things that we see that I'll just talk about briefly would be RSV. That's a respiratory tract infection that we see very commonly, usually in the winter months, but we're seeing a lot of it right now. And check out this chest x-ray. If you guys remember in my last video about how to read a chest x-ray, a lot of people, when you first look at this, you'll be like, oh my gosh, there's a huge pneumonia, maybe a bacterial pneumonia in that right upper lobe. But this is actually very common for RSV to show a right upper lobe atelectasis, and this is not a pneumonia this is not a bacterial infection um, it is not a strep pneumo infection this very commonly is RSV pneumonia or a viral pneumonia bronchiolitis with atelectasis there in the right upper lobe so when we have someone with RSV bronchiolitis what we do is they usually get admitted if they require oxygen therapy and so they'll get a high flow nasal cannula through a little nasal cannula that goes in the little nares and then we just wash them for you know one day three days five days it kind of depends on the child and all we do for them is conservative management we do not give breathing treatments we do not give albuterol ipotropium we do not give any of that we just help them work or we just help them with their work of breathing by giving oxygen and then if they're not able to take in um, breast milk or bottle feed because the respiratory distress is too bad that it'd be dangerous then we can help give them nutrition through either an IV or a nasogastric tube that goes into their tummy and gives them nutrition that way and then hopefully within a couple days they're able to come off that oxygen and get to go home out of the hospital so that's a very common case that we're seeing right now there are many many others but that's all I'm going to share with you because I'm running a little short on time. I My beautiful wife is graduating tonight, which I'm so pumped about. Unfortunately, because it is like 
still kind of like COVID like our hospital could not put on a graduation event so everything will be online but since our whole program is vaccinated we are getting together and, and are going to celebrate together this is like the last time that i may so see some of these people so i'm excited to go fellowship love on them share in their you know excitement about graduating and my beautiful wife graduating and just have a good time tonight so unfortunately that means that my workout tonight is not going to happen you know, it's kind of crazy, right? Like I always stay so focused on my working out and making sure I never miss any workouts, but life also happens and celebrating with my colleagues and with my beautiful wife and hanging out with my boy is definitely, definitely more important. So this swim session is not going to get in today, but that is okay. Uh, we'll get back on track tomorrow. And so tomorrow I want to share with you guys my race schedule for the year. So. I'm going to go celebrate, show you guys some clips from that, and then let's talk about my race schedule and see what we have upcoming this year. My race schedule is a little bit crazy, a little bit intense, especially during residency, but let's take a look at it. So we can see that my very first race is in two weeks or a week and a half, and that's just a short, it's either an Olympic distance or a sprint distance here, close to home near Memphis, Antioche, I think it's Buffalo Antioche, something like that, sprint triathlon. My goal for that one is to place first, so we'll see if that happens. Then we have Memphis in May, which, er, Memphis in May, which is actually gonna be in August, which has a cash prize this year. I would love, love, love to do well in that one. Then we have September, we have the Arkansas State Championships. It's an Olympic distance triathlon at Lake DeGray. That one would be pretty sweet to come in first as well. I have so much training to do. I hope I can do it. And then the big one, the one that I will be have working so hard for that I'm currently training for to hopefully qualify for the world championships is in October. And this is Ironman Memphis 70.3. Going to be giving it everything I have, trying to get a 430 or at least the top three in my age group to qualify for the world championships. And then a month later, I have Ironman Texas, or not Ironman, that was my first Ironman. I have Ironman Florida, where I would also love to do a sub 10. I don't know if that's possible for me, but I have 20 weeks, 20 weeks to get it done, a lot of training to do. I have a lot of improving to do on my swim and a lot of improving to do on my bike. But that is my race day schedule. Comment below with your expected times for each of them. Would love to hear what you guys think and look forward to sharing this journey with you and hopefully you guys are inspired to try a sport that you guys were not confident that you could do well at or even do because that's how I got started in triathlon and look now you know look at my race schedule for the year absolutely insane two two years later after never swimming never biking and now we're full go full head of steam Hopefully it encourages you to do the same. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Before I go, I want you to know that you are greatly, greatly loved and that you're wonderfully and beautifully created and that you are capable of far more than you could ever imagine.